<laughs> Hello, uh, I'm going to talk about effective DLC type tracking. Uh, my name's Lloyd, and as I say, a big thanks to the committee as well for having me here as well. Uh, it's been an absolute, really, really, really good conference so far. Um, so yeah, over the past like two years, I've been working on a platform called Denter, which is basically a kind of TI and kind of so basically Denter is like a DDoS spread intelligence platform. Um, I'll be working on my, like my spare time. So yeah, get to it. So yeah, here I am. I am Lloyd Labs on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm third year in a maker. Um, I'm a reverse engineering enthusiast and I love Windows and Terminals. Um, I like to program a lot. Uh, which is a lot but yeah, mainly I see more pro uh, programmer as well. Uh, I like to do CTFs as well. When I think about this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, socket front end. So like Denser is basically yeah, this front end I made that's really bad. So I have the generic kind of like math and like stuff inside and yeah. So yeah, what is a DDoS attack? So in Denser we have like we have we categorize DDoS attacks into like three basic things. So the attacker own resources is basically like attacker, for example, right, rent, uh, renting like free servers. I mean like. Oh, I'm gonna like attack this guy, and then there's reflect reflection attacks and body attacks. So attackers like seek to disrupt um, their target. So the motivations of them are basically like the majority of DDoS attacks are basically kids wanting to like annoy other kids. Uh, but there's also big players there as well. For example, uh, the owners of the services that the kids basically rent from. Um, have uh, like big targets as well. Say so, like they'll overload service like in like a major amount of like uh, data, which basically disrupts their service and yeah, like they basically uh, yeah, and, like the attacks will span through the entire o OSI model. So you can have layer four attacks, and Marai also employs layer three attacks as well. So the thing of uh, who's heard of Marai in the audience, you know the bonnet Marai here. Yeah. Uh, so Marai basically. Traditionally, uh, DDoS attacks targeted layer 4 and layer 7. So, the layer 4 level is like TCP and UDP, and layer 7, which is the app <laughs> level. So, we basically traditionally saw, um, layer 7 attacks went for the kind of like, so for example, HTTP, uh, we see attackers attacking HTTP to like over, over, over sorry, <laughs> over the server, for example. And, uh, the MRI kind of changed the game a bit. And yeah, the market for it is gigantic. Yeah, so the reflection attacks are the biggest type of attacks because basically the barrier for entry is extremely low. Um, attackers can rent like a DDoS for higher service for like four, like four pounds, like cheaper than a pound. To basically like take whoever they want offline for like, and they can hit them at like five gigabit per second, which could take probably small like enterprise offline. Nothing major though. I'll say like for the attack, if there's like a home connection or something, like you can obviously take them offline. And yeah, like the, the market is gigantic for these guys. Um, this guy like uh, who got, got arrested recently, um, who actually owned a lot of these services, and I think he made like two hundred and fifty k a year or something. Yeah, I don't know why I work in security. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what is the market like? So the bar, as I said, the barrier for entry is like extremely low. For four dollars, you could have one like a massive attack. Well, not a massive attack, but you, you could take like a small enterprise offline. You could take a home connection offline. Um, yeah, the big boys do not a game to DDoS. For example, like traditional botnets, such as Emotet and Trickbot, etc., but not like well, they do engagement, but they don't because the return per infection for the big Russian guys are like they want to go after the banks, for etc. and yeah, because they want to go after all this stuff like credential theft and web injects and stuff like that. So this is an example of here about DDoS for hire service uh, called Sinstress.io, and uh, you can register, email, passwords, and then bang anyone you want one offline. Um, a lot of people who, who access this are gamers. Uh, sure, a few people in the audience have probably used stress services in the past. Uh, yeah, they used to be like extremely popular, but there's been yeah, recent takeouts and stuff. So, yeah, so like Russians do not care. Uh, this is a screenshot from the exploit in, uh, dot in, which is like a Russian cyberprint farm. 
uh, which is private. Um, that's a, a more where, uh, sample pods, uh, smoke up. Um, don't know if anyone's familiar with it. But yeah, the actors did not care at all. So, you might add that as a feature, but they did not care about DDoS at all because, as I said, the return infection, especially in Windows box, is not ideal. Um, they, they make a lot more through, like, credential theft and stealing their banking details, etc. So, yeah, the big guys do not care about DDoS at all. Uh, the guys who are, like, obsessed with, like, the DDoS stuff are mainly, like, kids. So, so, yeah, as I said, like, one of the major, uh, the biggest vector of DDoS attacks is the reflection attacks. So, for example, if you send a 39 uh, byte packet to, like, a DNS resolver, it's going to send you back, like, 3k bytes. Um, and if you spoof the source IP in the header, um, a lot of ISPs actually block this, so the threat actors need to find a provider that does not block, like, spoofing IP addresses. So if you find a provider that can, so basically like ISP will filter the, the source header and make sure the IP address and the source header is actually from their network. So if it's not from the right network, they'll just block it. So the threat editors go after networks which don't block it and they'll pay a premium price for that in the black market. Um, yes, so yeah, uh, the threat editor will stand inside, yeah, for vulnerable services such as DNS. And uh, they'll send a tiny DNS query and they'll return a massive DNS query. So UDP obviously is like connectionless. So, like you send a response, it'll come back to you. And yeah, well, you'll get a response much larger. And obviously if you send a request, well UDP is like responses, right? So what's well, not responses, but if you send a request to say a DNS server like 8.8.8.8 .8 and you get a it's the third end bytes for the headers obviously. And you get responses like 3.3k bytes. That's a massive response. And if you can scrape the IP address and then they return like a massive amount of data to you, you can exploit that. So then if an attacker, for example, scans the internet for all the vulnerable DNS services, filters by the biggest packet size, and sorry, and then filters by the biggest packet size, they can then exploit that. So, if the attacker spits IP address, it will come back to the victim. It won't root, it obviously won't root back to the um, attacker. It will come back to the victim. So, yeah, that's when it becomes like a massive issue. Yeah, so that's kind of an example of what happens. Uh, imagine there's like a kind of like internet route. It's like those spits IP address. They won't, it obviously won't come back to them. And then there's so many servers, like it's very so bad. And there's a massive amount of data. And the bar branch, as I said, is extremely low for these guys. Um, it's mainly like kids, like 13 year olds. Uh, because they killed each other in foreign air or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so like we can spot a multitude of vectors. So, TS3, Mencache, DNS, NTP, LDAP, TFTP, anything that basically returns a bigger. So, TSP reflection is a thing, but it's not as big as UDP reflection because it returns like a. UDP reflection is a lot more. Like the returns a lot better for the attacker. So, TeamSpeak, for example, if you send, I think it's a initial packet to a server, I think the application rate is like 23 or something. So, if an attacker spoofed a victim's IP address and went, oh, this is my IP address, um, give this to me, but it's not actually their IP address, they just send the header, it'll come back to the victim. So, what attackers will do will scan the entire internet for these vulnerable servers and see, oh shit, like that's a uh, that's returning like a lot of bytes. Let's let's take all of them as a like a list on our and let's use that to attack people. Yes, it's like common service like NTP, like that's using like everyone's phones, like for time and LDAPs, like the directory stuff and TFTPs, for FTP and SFP for like they're all common protocols. These protocols were made like decades ago. Or the Mencash, the Mencash is quite it's not ancient, but protocol now protocols nowadays implement uh, like proper handshakes, like tokens and stuff. So you'll send a byte, you'll, sorry, you'll send a packet, someone will go, oh, here's a response or a challenge, for example. So like this type of stuff can't happen, but stuff like DNS, like that's like embedded, it's like quite hard to change. Yeah, it's like DDoS based botnets, like Mari, for example, uh, IoT devices, cause, like they're really, really, really easy to compromise and the return infection is like really bad. Uh, Apart from the, obviously the network usage, which you'll actually use for. 
Um, yeah, like the compute power for IOTs are like IOT devices are like extremely small. It's like yeah, like attackers can't really use them for much. Um, they're using other more uh, malware campaigns such as like TrickBot and stuff as a uh, proxy to actual CTOs. But yeah, IoT devices in general are like, useless to attackers. Um, yeah, apart from just for the network usage. So that's why that's used a lot. Is sorry, that's why they're used a lot by like uh, threat actors. So yeah, yeah, Windows machines are not used at all, as I said earlier, because yeah, the return on infection like. Would they rather steal their banking uh, banking credentials, or would they rather deal off someone and like fuck the network for like a good hour or whatever, or miss certain like a uh, credential theft? Yeah, so Mario was like responsible for like some of the biggest DDoS attacks like we've seen in recent times. So like GitHub, I'm sorry, GitHub was hit by Mario. But GitHub was hit by Mario. Um, Dying DNS was hit by Mario, which took to off by uh, some Amazon services as well. Um, some Facebook services as well. Um, yeah, the source code was leaked by the author in 2016, which has actually turned out to be a 22 year old guy from uh, Massachusetts called Harris Chia. Um, and they actually both worked at an anti DDoS company, which is really weird. So basically, what they were doing was they're attacking Minecraft servers with this massive, like, massive botnet and saying to them, Oh, we're attacking you guys, you need protection. But obviously, the Minecraft server owners didn't know, like, they were, like, on the bad side. They're like, oh, these guys are attacking you. We've seen you guys attacking them. Oh, fire protection. So, kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was leaked in 2016 by uh, a guy under the name of Anna Senpai, uh, which is a anime reference uh, for you anime, anime fans. Uh, yeah, so, like, yeah, he leaked that. So basically, the theory behind the leaked it was he wanted to distribute like the kind of responsibility over the board. Um, he kind of wanted like every like skid on earth to use to Mari, kind of like distribute the blame basically. So like it can be attributed back to him. It really backfired on him. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so, like so recently. Yeah, so it propagates through the credential brute force and brute it. Um, because I do advice are fucking like they're shit, man. Like. Like uh, the, the like the security is so bad, and the recent because they all use like OEM stuff. So, like there's like a uh, factories in like China, and they'll basically just push the firmware, and they'll just brand it on like multiple routers. So like if one router has an issue, like ten brands have an issue. So all these routers are basically using like default passwords for like everything, and Mario basically has a hard coded um like list of username and passwords. So they could I think at the peak get yeah, compromised, but. Yeah, like 500,000 devices, like spread globally as well. So yeah, coming back to the, the DDoS point, um, as a capability of like UDP, TCP and HTTP th- attacks, um, and it can like bypass protection such as Cloudflare as well, um, they basically emulate it's like being like a real person on a browser within the bot. It's like, yeah, like the, the, the hard code is basically pretending to be a person person on a website so they could bypass Cloudflare. Um, you know, they target multiple architectures and they spread like, for example, like a, a router could be like ARM, it could be MIPS, it could be MIPSO, it could be RISC, like it could be, it could be anything. So yeah, basically what they do is when they load in onto the device, they like go for everything. So they'll like try and load like x86, x64, MIPS, ARM, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's the guy there who actually created Mara, who was taken to port, uh, Two years ago, I think. Um, he actually beat off his own university using Mara, <laughs> which got him caught, and he, he started posting about his roommate and his roommate grassing or grassland. Yeah, but yeah, he works for the FBI now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is kind of the life cycle of like a Mara bot. So there's an initial compromise, which is from another bot, because obviously it's like a self-spreading type thing. So yeah, the device will compromise a threat after scanning, for example, on a server or by another bot. And then the bot will connect to the CTO. Um, it will start scanning itself for other vulnerable devices on the internet. Um, then it'll try and exploit them. Um, Mario is like, is developed recently because obviously it's open source. So like a lot of like kids will like jump on it. Um, they're trying to like employ exploits into it. First, like they've moved away from the traditional brute forcing side. 
more like exploiting like uh, vulnerabilities in like the Bruce firmware. Well, the vice's firmware in general. If that's a server IoT device. Yeah, and it'll try and load itself. Uh, doesn't really matter what architecture it is, because like, there's so many architectures. So basically what they'll do is they'll write like a bash script and uh, they'll basically load they have a bind they they'll compile with the, sorry, they'll cross compile a binary for every single architecture that exists and they'll try and load just spam it and be like, oh yeah, just load it like <laughs> and then yeah, the like device is infected. And then obviously that's part of it and then IoT devices traditionally run on like a uh, like flash memory, so it's not actually on like a disk as such. So as soon as like someone reboots a router, like it won't be on the device anymore. But obviously, like it'll still be vulnerable to get infected again. Yeah, it's like there's so many forks in Mario. As I said, like you got the guy like basically said to everyone like, "Oh, here's the goes." So yeah, like people make like stupid names like Gucci and Corona and Fbot <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. So like most people who use this are like in the age of like 15 to 22, which is fun. Uh, yeah, like the NCA have good stories, the NCA have good stories about guys mm-hmm. who've talked about this. Because the barrier for entry, as I said, the barrier for entry for this is so low. All, all you need to do is literally, it's open source, so just like, like double the, double the source, set up your C2, bang, you've got a botnet, easy. Uh, yeah, like those guys have like employed other exploits as well. So there's been a few like uh, old days who've been but there's actors behind these actors that have sold them old days. Sorry, zero days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they sold them zero days. Uh, because basically, so people behind these uh, kind of forks of Mara get paid a lot more by other guys. Uh, they're more invested in kind of like finding clients who will actually pay for a DDoS for hire service. Whereas as I said earlier, the reflective stuff. Uh, the guys like buying like the public online services are not kind of involved in these circles. So these circles are kind of closed and like it's like all about who you know and yeah. Yeah, I'm like, why why would you care about those slacks anyways? Yeah, so like for example, like the 1.3 terabytes per second in Slack was against um, the GitHub, and that was using Mencached. Um probably just some news articles just for a bit of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, like if you bring an entire organization to your knees, it doesn't matter like EDR solution you have, doesn't matter what MDR solution you have, doesn't matter like how good like you're like yeah, it doesn't matter like if you can take an organization down for a diesel sorry, for a DDoS attack, like they're screwed, like it doesn't matter, like if they don't have protection on that end, like yeah. And it's as I said, like the barrier for entry is like shooting my own. It's like you don't need to compromise anyone to like disrupt them. Like all you need to do is buy a four dollar service from online and smack the IP, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so like how like going back to then, so like how do we track them? Like how do we see what these like miscreants are actually doing? <laughs> these bad kid these bad kids. Yeah, so like reflection taxes revisited. As I said, like they actually scan the internet for vulnerable devices. It's like what have we actually access as a vulnerable device? And pretend that we're vulnerable. I would say the only issue with this is a bit of a grey area because technically you are attacking victims. But yeah, with Denser, I did put something in place so like we're not like constantly attacking people. Well, attacking people. I'll say in the the comments like we're a vulnerable service to. So I'm not patch anything, and we're seeing victims being attacked. So yeah, like we can see who the victim is, so we can basically parse the destination IP. Um, in the IP header, and be like, oh, um, and we can identify. So basically, what these guys will do who run these services will they'll scan the internet like probably every week for, for example, like DNS servers, uh, like reply with a massive amount. As I said earlier, yeah, um, thirty nine bytes uh, compared to like thirty three k bytes. Um, yeah, and then we can pretend to be one of those services, and then we can track them. So back to my oh god, that's yeah. So like, what about my how do we want to do this the day? Mario's about a chicken mom because obviously it's malware and it's loaded onto like different devices and stuff. There's a few routes we can actually take to launch them. So my take on this, I don't know if it's the best way. So we need to collect the samples first. So we can like run honeypots, for example, like Kyrie is a 
commonly. They're really easy to use, like Town and Honeypot. And Denser runs on like a custom HTTP Honeypot and like emulates routers as well to put Denser on over the device. Um, because yeah, as I said, like actors are like they're actually moving away from the brute forcing side of things and going towards the more exploitation side of things and trying to target the root of primary inside. So yeah, my take was basically pretend you're infected so then we can monitor what they're doing. Um, I did say earlier it's a bit of a grey area when it comes to law because technically you are. So yeah, I wrote it so like you don't actually engage in attacks but you can see what they're doing. So. The first part is like to collect the sample so we can extract the C2. Um, so the extraction part is actually the hardest part because Mario actually employs obfuscation in like every single level. So like you can't just run strings on like extract the C2. Um, yeah, and then obviously the emulation is like, we'll emulate Mario's um, protocol, which is a binary based protocol. And yeah, that, that's when it gets logged and then it gets put into Denser, which is the plainly Intel part, which is a very threat intelligence based term, but. Yeah, and then um, Denser has like a WebSocket API, so organizations can basically kind of like pull from that API and go, oh, we saw them got attacked. We, we saw like they were getting attacked. Oh, God. Um, yeah, they can pull from that API and uh, yeah. And we also uh, set up alerts as well. So if an organization says, oh, um, can you alert us when ASN, whatever, whatever is getting attacked, uh, we do that stuff as well. This is all free, by the way. It's not like a sales pitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so like the the, the approach of Mario was to extract the C2. Well, one approach was to extract the C2 manually, which was an issue because obviously Mario encrypts strings. For example, this subroutine here is like one of the uh, encryption routines, and these are all the strings here which are to be decrypted. And the guys, as I said, like Mario is open source. Like they can change it. Like the XOR keys, they can change anything in the code. So, or we could have a sandbox, for example, like K for, because some of it's a hybrid analysis or malware or Firestore, for example, um, and post that locally. But the issue with that is it's extremely like, um, yeah, it's a high overhead. Um, so, and I have like no, I'm my uni so I have like no money. So like, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a facilitate that stuff. So yeah, the best, Option I came up with was using Unicorn, which is like a CPU em emulation framework. Um, there's a project based off it called U um, Usercorn, and basically I can like hook the libc calls. So, yeah, the best option was to hook the libc calls from Usercorn, and then the issue with that is as well, yeah, I come to the issues a bit, but yeah, like Unicorn supports multiple architectures, I don't, I don't need to have like five VMs, different architectures, and different environments set up, like Usercorn does handle all that at all. And there's no VM involved, there's no nothing at all. It all runs like bare metal. Yeah, so back to the collection point. So yeah, we need to collect the samples. Um, yeah, the honeypot's a bit, like a honeypot is the best approach. And curry is great. Like the guys behind curry constantly update it. It's the best town at SSH, and the SSH, um, honeypot is like ever exists. Like it's, it's really good. And the guys, the guys behind it are really good as well. Um, Yes, yeah, so for what the attackers go after the firmware. So there's been a lot of uh, vulnerabilities which are like firmware based. Um, so my approach to that was uh, again like pretend to be a victim, kind of emulate the environment so an attacker would actually attack you, and then we love that. Um, yeah, we could use Virusto, but Virusto Enterprise, I don't think we use it, it costs a lot of money. Uh, or yeah, for example, like other open malware shares. Uh, like Fireshare or VX Underground, which has come back recently. Yeah, and if we add all that stuff together, so if we use open source kind of uh, shares of malware and we add the Honeypot stuff in, may obviously make sure there's no duplicates. Um, we have like a really good data set because we can see what's like going live, what other people have seen. Because attackers, like, so I tried to make Dancer so it's like distrib uh, distributed like really well uh, because attackers are sometimes only target China or Japan or Whatever, so yeah, like we can add all those, all those together and get a really good data set. Sorry, we're actually out of time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can remember two minutes. Oh, two minutes? Can you do it in two minutes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the extraction stuff, yeah, as I said, you uh, use a coin. Then you emulate it. As I said, Mara is actually open source, so we can emulate the protocol. Um, we can log the attacks as well. I'm simply pretend we're the victim, but it's a great Um, yeah. 
and yeah, the time went to a party that the tag was our pipe to elastic, which all goes into Denso. And the organizations be like, Oh, I'm see if, like I'm attacked through this ASN is this ASN is attacked through see like a attack um like patterns for example, like they're gonna attack like every Wednesday by a certain threat actor or whatever. Yeah, so like what have I seen with this? Like you, the USA is the most attack country, DNS is the most popular attack method. There's so many vulnerable DNS servers that just spare them of like shit. If you give them like a tiny wee packet, like they'll just like bang that right out of you. Um yeah, like the Mario operators go after big targets. Like they don't go after like your traditional, like twelve year old who's like kill someone else and like call you or whatever. Um, yeah, so like any questions? That's my Twitter and that's my blog. Yeah, that's it.